Is anime making us lonely? Maybe. Do a quick Google search and you'll find stories from all over the internet of people calling out anime, blaming it for their loneliness. But then again, you can probably Google almost anything these days and something will show up, right? Loneliness has hit our generation harder than John Barnett hit Boeing stock prices. It's always been there, lurking in the shadows, but something about the last 50 years has really brought loneliness center stage. Millions are hiding from the world. People are staying single. Animations and manga. Hang on a sec. Sitting at home, no girlfriend. Anime? Am I squinting too hard? Trying to connect dots that aren't really there? Uh, people get lonely for all sorts of reasons, right? I'll be real with you, I thought so at first, but I couldn't find a single funny one, which is why I had to use Photoshop. So maybe there is some truth to this whole anime is making me lonely thing. Let's see. Naruto, Mushoku Tensei, Bochi, all have lonely main characters. Naruto had no friends for like 10 years. Rudeus was a shut-in, and Bochi was, well... Cool, no problems there. Kinda relatable, actually. But you know what's not cool? When the only way these characters overcome their loneliness is by going on an epic adventure and making a ton of friends. How's that supposed to make me feel? My biggest adventure this year was reading about the quality control issues at Boeing. <laughs> oh, the memes are great. In every form of media, it's lonely equals bad. Lonely, bad. Lonely, bad. Lonely, you get the point. The shows we watch hammer this message into us, and anime is no exception. Once you see it, it's hard to unsee. Kinda like the inside of an airplane. D does this turbine look right to you? You'll never be happy alone. Being by yourself is sad. It's all so depressing. Because if anime is teaching us that being alone is sad, and the only way to fix it is to do something you can't realistically do, then you might as well be saying I'm gonna be sad and lonely forever. What am I supposed to do with that? Free Wind shows us something different. We follow an elf as old as time, and she lives in quiet isolation for hundreds of years. Civilizations prosper, and people grow old around her. The only constant in her life is herself. By shonen standards, she'd be miserable. But why, then, does she look so free? Free Wind is fine on her own. In fact, she's more than fine. She looks like she'd be cool living by herself and building ratchet snowmen for the rest of her life. Damn, does that thing have three arms? What's the difference between Freerin and Naruto? Why is one miserable alone while the other thrives? Old men with beards have studied the art of being lonely for centuries. And turns out, whether you flourish or wither in isolation all hinges on one thing. Spot the difference. Naruto was shunned by his whole village, forced to live his entire childhood alone because no one wanted to be his friend, while Freerin is down with it. Sure, her social skills are questionable at times, but people generally vibe with her. Yet she chooses to live like a hobo. What's the difference? That's right. Freerin has Asperger's. <laughs> I'm just playing. The answer is choice. Did you choose the lonely life or did the lonely life choose you? That slight nuance may not seem all that important, but it's actually huge. We even have different words for them in English. Loneliness is what Naruto went through. It's what we feel when we want companionship but can't get it. It's when alone time is forced on us. Well, solitude is when we choose to be alone. Like Freerin, it's when we don't need the company of other people to feel fulfilled. Sigma wolves out there be like, Oh, 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 oh that, that's me, that's me! Let me make that more clear. Solitude is recharging your social batteries with an episode of your favorite anime after a long day hanging out with friends. Ooh, new demon slayer! Loneliness is binging an entire season of a show you don't care about just so you don't feel alone. Solitude is hiking by yourself on a cool autumn morning, loving every second of it. Ah, nature. Loneliness is leaving the radio on 24-7 to drown out the scary voices in your head. You choose solitude, but loneliness chooses you. Sigma Wolves now like, in a tell-all interview with Hideo Kojima, critically acclaimed game designer and world-renowned uh, meme lord, he confesses his struggle with loneliness. Growing up, his parents weren't home a lot. See, they had this rare genetic condition that only affects 1.5% of people around the world. That's right. They were Japanese. So they had to work like 30 hours a day. And so for many of his formative years, Kojima came home to an empty house. Being by himself day after day made him so lonely he used to leave the TV on most evenings, just so the background noise would keep him from going insane. A habit that still follows him to this day. But it was during these periods of crushing isolation, he discovered his talent for creating film and later video games. See, there are two sides to being alone. Loneliness, which science tells us is as bad as smoking 15 cigarettes a day, and solitude, which has 
a ton of benefits, including boosting creativity and promoting self-growth. Kojima overcame his loneliness, transforming it into solitude, and has become one of the world's leading game designers for it, with his experiences with loneliness influencing many of his hideo games. <laughs> And a ton of successful people will tell you the same. Bill Gates is famous for his Think Weeks, where twice a year, he flies off to a remote location and spends seven days by himself in the woods. No phones, no laptop, just him. Some books and a ton of Diet Coke. JK Rowling, before the tweets, admitted to writing her best work while sitting alone for hours on long, quiet train rides. We've known about the benefits of solitude for a while. Whosoever is delighted in solitude is either a beast or a god. Aristotle said that. And then, there was Socrates. Not convinced? Just ask the Japanese, or the Chinese, or the K-pop people. Their primary religion glorifies solitude. According to a 3,000-year-old legend, a man once meditated in solitude for 49 days straight under a tree. And he became a god! They got statues of him everywhere. I guess self-improvement really does work. Jokes aside, learning to turn loneliness into solitude is really good for you. <laughs> But probably the best thing about it is it forces you to look within. Psychology teaches us that we're not the masters of our own mind. If we were, why do we keep lying to ourselves? Oh, 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 just one more game. Sitting alone in solitude puts us in touch with the inner parts of ourselves we don't pay enough attention to. The parts that get drowned out by the hustle and bustle of our day-to-day -day lives. It lets us consolidate our thoughts, sort ourselves out, and because of this, we learn about ourselves and grow. Also these things. But if solitude is so great, why does anime hate it? Why are 95% of all main characters miserable alone and need to have a ton of friends? Well, it's because it's really hard to make a show interesting if all the main guy does is sit around and jerk off all day. Anime needs action, adventure, and more than one character. The only question left at this point is how do we turn loneliness into solitude? Well, it's a little hard. Sure, sometimes it comes naturally. Sometimes we like being alone. But to be able to overcome loneliness permanently, that's a whole different ballgame. First of all, no one can do it for you. And second, the process is painful as shit. But if you're game, these are the steps. You need to first give in to your loneliness. You need to accept the challenge of being alone and miserable. You need to choose to face isolation head on. Then you wait. Ride out the pain. Listen to the voices and thoughts that well up from inside you. Learn about your deepest fears and desires. See, most people need the company of others because they're uncomfortable with who they are. They need someone to distract them from the scary voices that get louder when they're alone. And when they can't find anyone to save them, that's loneliness. But what if you're friends with the voices? Then they're not so scary anymore now, are they? Also, um, touching grass helps. 